Hi, I'm Steve Straza, and I'm here with JC Press, founder of allstarcharts.com. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about small cap stocks. JC, what are you seeing out there in the Russell 2000 and other small cap U.S. equity indices? Uh, well, the small caps have been a mess, right, Straza? I mean, talk about underperformance. You know, group the small caps with the mid caps, micro caps, anything not large caps, um, you know, I think has really been a huge underperformer. But what's interesting is that on a relative basis, when you talk about small caps versus large caps, on a relative basis, we are now back down to where that ratio bottomed in 2016. So the obvious question is, all right, are we going to bottom in a similar area, in a similar zone uh, to where we bottomed a few years ago? That's really the big question. And based on what we're seeing, I think there's, listen, if, if small caps are going to start to outperform, this would be a logical area for that to happen, right? Right. So basically, I mean, you're seeing a pretty nice momentum divergence while price just, I think, undercut those lows of yeah. early 2016 before they ripped after the election. Yeah, it's really interesting. So think about it. If you, this is well before, this is early 2016, right? So this is when the, the market overall bottomed after the real bear market of 2015, if you will, that started at the end of 2014. So that marked the low for the market. Emerging markets started to rally, banks started going up, right? If you recall, and then ultimately interest rates bottomed later that uh, in the summer, and then ultimately yep. financial started to outperform and things like that. So uh, when you look at the individual chart itself of IWM versus SPY, small caps, large caps, two liquid ETFs representing both, there are bullish momentum divergences on both the weekly chart and the daily ratio chart. So not only are we seeing bullish momentum divergences, we're back down to those 2016 lows. So like I said, if we're going to bottom, this would be a logical place for us to do it. But that thesis is invalid to your earlier point if we're not above those 2016 lows. So we've barely undercut it. And if we recover this week, I think the squeeze is on. Okay, so I think momentum didn't even get oversold either. So I, I think we're still kind of in a bullish momentum regime. Totally. On, on those ratios too. 100%. Yeah. So are you expecting that if we do get this move and we rip, are cyclicals just going to start working? Would we expect to see the same out of transports, financials? Like you said, last time we saw small caps bottom relative to large caps. We saw a nice move in yields also. What do you make of it in general? I think you hit the nail right on the head. I think that's exactly the, the situation because what are, what, why are the large caps doing so well? There's a lot of technology stocks in there, right? But in the small caps, you got a, a heavy weighting in regional bank stocks. So if the regional banks can get going, which if interest rates are going up, regional banks could get going, I think that will be the catalyst to really get small caps going, particularly on a relative basis. So that's another reason from an intermarket perspective why it's so important for these small caps to start outperforming large caps, because I think if that does happen, the strength is coming from the financials. So you asked me about cyclicals. Who's, the, who's been the leaders? Technology and consumer discretionary stocks are two of the best sectors out there, right? And those are uh, more offensive sectors. The one missing out of that group is financials. So if regional banks can get going, because other, other financials are doing well. Some of the, 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 the mobile payment stuff, uh, the, the broker dealers, like the, um, uh, the, the stock market exchanges, like ICE, right? And, and those yep. companies, CME, they look good, but broker the regional dealer. banks are the struggle. Yeah. So um, is this kind of similar to the situation we talked about last week where in Switzerland they broke out, but the rest of Europe was kind of ha has seen this lackluster price action. And when you look into the components of these indexes, they're very heavy in financials. That's kind of the similar situation with the Russell 2000 uh, versus the S&P 500, right? There's a much, much larger exposure towards financials in general. That's exactly right. And it's the same story we talked about. If the European bank stocks could get going, Deutsche Bank stops going down, right? Like it did towards the end of last week, right? Nice strength into the uh, end of the week. If that Deutsche Bank strength can continue, interest rates start going up, I think we need to be betting on small caps finally starting some outperformance. So that's definitely what we'll be watching this week. Okay, let me ask you one last question. Sure. Do we need small caps to outperform for the overall picture for equities to be bullish. I what don't, if they don't bottom here and bounce? I don't think they have to outperform, but they do have to participate, right? Large caps can continue to outperform, that's fine. We've seen that throughout history mm -hmm. a million times. That would be perfectly normal. But based on the current situation, 
the underperformance in financials, interest rates collapsing, all of those things compounding on one another. See what I did there? Compounding, right? All of those <laughs> things happening. If small caps were to outperform, I think that there's a bigger story out there. And I think it has to do with interest rates, financials, European banks. So I think it's bigger than just, hey, do we need small caps to outperform for us to do well? I think today that answer is yes. All right, so small caps are still trapped beneath their uh, highs from 2018. We'll see what happens. Check back in next week.